If you are trying to determine which mechaniz- mechanism a substitution reaction will take place by, uh, if you're trying to t- determine if a reaction is SN1 or SN2, the first factor that you should consider is the structure of the substrate or the molecule that's undergoing substitution. If it's a methyl, a primary, or a tertiary molecule, these types of molecules are only capable of doing one mechanism or the other. And so a lot of times we can choose the mechanism of substitution just simply by looking at the the structure of the substrate. If you have a secondary allylic or benzylic molecule undergoing substitution, these molecules are capable of either SN1 or SN2. And in that case, we have to look at another factor or variable to help us choose if the reaction will be SN1 or SN2. The second variable that I want you to consider is the solvent in which the reaction is taking place. The solvent is just simply the liquid that is serving as like the home for the chemical reaction. In some cases, the solvent is also the nucleophile. So sometimes um, there is one molecule that's serving as both the solvent and the nucleophile at the same time, but that's not extremely common. Uh, So sometimes you'll see that, sometimes you won't. How will you know what the solvent is in a chemical reaction? Well, in an organic reaction, we typically write at least one reactant in front of or on the left side of our reaction arrow. Sometimes we will write another reactant on top of the arrow. And sometimes we have a few reactants that we have to write. If we are going to show the solvent, we will write it underneath the reaction arrow. The reaction solvent is not always shown because it's not always important. So for some substitution reactions, the solvent will never be provided for you um, and other reactions as well. But when you need to consider the solvent, to help you determine if a reaction is SN1 versus SN2. It will always be made available to you underneath the arrow. So how can we use solvent to predict what type of mechanism um, a substitution reaction will take place? Well, there's two different types of solvents that we see in substitution reactions. One or the other will be used. The two different types of solvents are polar protic and polar aprotic. So you know what polar means is just referring to to polarity of a molecule due to difference in electronegativity of the atoms in the molecule, like water is a polar molecule. So in a substitution reaction, no matter what, our solvent needs to be polar. And this is because we have ions in the substitution reaction. The nucleophile sometimes is negatively charged. In an SN1 reaction, we form a carbocation, which is positively charged. So we need a polar solvent no matter what. Protic versus aprotic is referring to acidic hydrogens. So protic means that you have an OH or an NH somewhere in the molecule. You have a hydrogen atom that is very polarized because it is attached to a very electronegative element. Aprotic means that the... the um, solvent is without any H plus or acidic protons. So this would mean that we would have no OH or no NH bonds anywhere in the molecule. The most common polar protic solvents that we use in organic chemistry in general are water, which is just all OH bonds, alcohols, which I'm going to write as ROH because it does not matter what the R is. It could be CH3OH, it could be CH3CH2OH. It has that OH bond. Alcohols are great solvents. Uh, Lesser, we'll see ammonia, NH3. That's also a, a protic solvent. And carboxylic acids, So acetic acid, CH3COOH, is a very common solvent for the polar protic um, category. Polar aprotic solvents, 
have no OH or NH bonds. So one of them, for example, would be CH3CN, that's acetonitrile, has no OH or NH bonds. The other two that we commonly see are DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, and DMF, dimethylformamide. Those are both abbreviations. These are not atoms. <laughs> Um, even though S and O are atoms, this stands for dimethyl sulfoxide, this stands for dimethyl formamid. These are polar aprotic solvents that are commonly used in the SN2 reaction. Why do we need these two different types of solvents? Well, um, for the polar protic solvent, the polar protic solvent, because it has that, that proton, that acidic proton, it's extremely polar. So these solvents will stabilize ions. And the polar aprotic does not stabilize ions. It stabilizes them to some extent, but it does not render them completely non-reactive. In the case of the polar protic solvent, we want to use that in the SN1 reaction because the SN1 reaction is totally dependent on the formation of the carbocation. So we need a polar protic solvent to stabilize the cation that is formed in the SN1 reaction. In the case of the polar aprotic reaction, we are solvent. We want to use that in the SN2 reaction because we want to leave our negatively charged nucleophile relatively reactive so that it can attack our carbon. So again, we want a polar protic solvent for SN1 to stabilize the carbocation so that it makes it easier for the molecule to form the carbocation. We want a polar aprotic solvent for SN2 so that it doesn't stabilize our nucleophile and it leaves that nucleophile reactive so that it can go ahead and attack. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, because I told you that the solvent was, uh, this is gonna be our factor number two and it's a relatively easy way for us to predict if it's SN1 or SN2, and all of this explanation doesn't sound really all that easy. This is pretty tricky stuff. But I'm gonna show you a shortcut that's gonna help you remember if the solvent prefers or, or favors an SN1 versus SN2. In the polar protic solvents, I want you to think of that as just PP for polar protic, and polar aprotic, I want, to think, I want you to think of that as PA for polar aprotic, Polar protic is just one letter repeated twice, the letter P. Polar A protic is two letters, P and A. The one letter solvent is the SN1 reaction and the two letter solvent is the SN2 reaction. And I know that's kind of cheesy, but that's how I remembered it myself back in the 90s when I was taking organic chemistry. So if you can remember polar protic, one letter, SN1, then the only thing that you need to actually remember is which solvents are protic and which solvents are aprotic. And for me personally, as a student, it was easier for me to memorize the three aprotic solvents and I knew that everything else was going to be protic.